Hey there everyone, this is Danielle. I've recently gotten set up so I can record GameCube games, so we're going to take a full playthrough of a particular game that I really like, but first, we're just gonna have a little uh, look at this older game that uh, is from a series near and dear to my heart, and I thought it might be good to see where it came from, have a look at the original. Uh, might be fun. So, Nintendo. you may be able to tell what game it is already, Based on what you're hearing. That's right. Animal Crossing for the GameCube. Released 2001, 2002, Nintendo. Uh, basically, this game, it was really an N64 game. Uh, it was called Animal Forest, or Debautso Numori or something. It was only released in Japan on the N64, and then essentially they ported the game to the GameCube with very little changes, and that's the game we have here. Um, so you'll notice it's not as pretty as you might expect a GameCube game to be, uh, and it's got various weird limitations that stem from it being an N64 game, really. So let's head in and have a look. So you've decided to move out, get your own place, see the world? That's groovy. Who needs someone telling you what to do all the time? You can do what you want, when you want, where you want. Yeah, living on your own, being free, it feels great. But living by yourself can be a real drag too. Still, if you've got some really tight friends somewhere nearby, then you'll know it'll all work out. Yeah man, friends are far out. Oh, I guess I'm kind of rambling, my bad. So, are you ready to hop on that train and go for a ride? I'm ready to go. Oh, I almost forgot. You'll enjoy your time in the world of Animal Crossing more if you get some friends to come here too. Yeah, it would be really cool if a lot of your friends came to visit the town. Later. So yeah, KK Slider introduces the game to you in this one. Uh, and then you get... Uh, this scene is roughly the same in all the games prior to New Horizons. Uh, you're on, you know, a... a public transport, you're on a train. In Wild World it was a bus, um, I think it was a bus in, in City Folk as well. In, Le in New Leaf it was a train again, but you have a scene like this, where you talk to someone on the mode of transport, and they basically introduce, like, let you design your character a little bit. Um, you don't get as much flexibility as you do in New Horizons, so I'll demonstrate that shortly. Hmm, uh, excuse me, do you have a second? Could you help me out? Is it, let's see now, 12.05pm on Saturday, May 30th, 2020? That's right. Uh, the game did have a real-time clock, even in the N64 version, but the N64 itself didn't have a real-time clock, so when you start that version of the game, you actually have to type in the current time every time you play it. Uh, so that's a big advantage of playing the GameCube version, since the GameCube itself has a clock. <laughs> Say thanks, you're too kind. Really, you're a big help. Mia <laughs> So, you mind if I sit here? I promise I won't fall asleep, tumble onto you, and start drooling on your shirt. Uh, please. Thanks again. Sure is nice meeting friendly folk on the train. You aren't a psycho, right? Just kidding. Hmm, that's a little ableist, Rover. I'm glad you don't talk like that anymore. Say, by the way, what's your name? I believe you get eight characters for your name in this game. I forget whether it's the same in in um in New Horizons or not for characters. I think you get twelve for player names, but I'm not sure. Uh, you can see like you have a keyboard, you can a cursor through that looks like a GameCube controller, which is pretty funny. Uh, using the shoulder buttons to do things like spaces, and it's it's pretty silly. <laughs> It wasn't quite standardised that all games would use like system keyboards yet, the way it is on the Switch. So you have different keyboards depending on what game you're playing. There we go, that's my name. Uh, you can... oh, interesting. The D-pad actually moves the cursor here. I'm pressing the D-pad now. You can see it says cursor, I thought that would just be this, but it's not. They're actually separate, which is interesting. Uh, the Z button does nothing, which is an interesting choice as well. On a, on a GameCube controller, the Z button is a trigger next to space. Uh, on this controller, which is actually a Switch Pro controller, I've made Z minus. Uh, which doesn't matter too much for this game, but for some games you need analog... Uh, analog, um, 
shoulder buttons, and the Switch Pro Controller doesn't have those. So you have to fake it using the shoulder buttons you do have. Hmm, well, hmm. Danielle. Now that is an odd name. Yeah. <laughs> Rover, that's so rude. Not that my opinion means much. What matters is, do you like the name Danielle? This is how you chose your gender in all the previous games. Um, oh, you can't use the D-pad. You have to use the analog stick to scroll here, you can't use the D-pad. Don't know why. Um, but yeah, this is this is the gender selection. Uh, you pick you put your name in and then they ask and then you can say it's cool name or a cute name. And apparently only boys can be cool and only girls can be cute, because that's how this works. Um, although if you pick the wrong one, uh, you can say no 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 to put in a different name, I believe. Uh, but yeah, you have to pick a binary gender in all the games prior to New Horizons, which just has a style that does essentially nothing and can be changed at any time. New Horizons is good that way. Anyway, if you pick the wrong one, for example, isn't it cool? Oh, I'm sorry, did I say it was odd? It's not odd, it's a great name for a boy. Really, it's a... Uh, it's a really great name. Yeah, <laughs> And you can just say, I'm not a boy. Oh, whoops, you're a girl? I mean... Yes, but that's a weird assumption to make, it's because I'm not a boy. <laughs> hmm, how embarrassing. Yep, real awkward. Hey, I ought to apologize. By the way, if you don't mind me asking, where are you headed? Okay, is this is what you name your town. Uh, in this, in this game I believe the limit is eight characters. Uh, I think they only upped that limit in New Horizons, also to twelve. Um, hmm. Tokyo is too long. Uh, it's a bit tricky to think of names that fit into eight characters. Um, you have a lot more room to work with in the later games. Oh, in, in New Horizons. Uh, I used Everfree as my New Leaf name because that's the only pony name that fits in. So I might do that again. Or I might do something else. Let's see how much of Cloudsdale fits. Clouds da. Hmm. Yeah, all of the place names in MLP are very long. <laughs> I might just go with Everfree again, for simplicity. There we go. Exactly the right length. You're going to Everfree? That's right. Hey, I know that place. Everfree is one of my favourite vacation spots. So, what are you going to Everfree for? Okay, the purpose of these questions, it's, uh, you know in Mystery Dungeon when you do a little personality test and then it lets you pick which Pokémon you are at the end? Well, I mean, it does in the, in the latest Mystery Dungeon. In most of them, it assigns you a Pokémon based on what you pick, so you have to know the right answers. This is the same sort of thing. Depending on what you pick here, it determines your character's facial features. There are, I think, 12 different faces that you can get, uh, based on what you pick. And it doesn't tell you what that's going to be till the end, so you, people had to retry over and over to figure out what face to get, because you can't customise it at all in this game. I'm moving. Hmm, moving, huh? I hate moving. Pack boxes, unpack boxes, it never ends. Say, where's your new place? Either way, you don't know yet, but you can be rude about it if you want. Don't know yet. What? You don't know yet? Are you out of your tree? Well, we obviously need to find you a place to live. Oh, wait. Boy, am I dense. This buddy of mine runs the shop in Everfree. Let me give him a jingle. This will take me two seconds. Wait right here, okay? There goes Rover. So Rover's gonna call Tom Nook, who runs the shop, of course. Beep, beep, boop, beep. Hey there, Nook. It's me. So, what's the good word? You raking in the cash? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ooh, that's rough. Brutal. Oh, by the way, uh, that lady sitting there in the seat we can just kind of see, that's Joan. She used to sell turnips in the previous games. In New Horizons, she was replaced with her, I think, granddaughter, Daisy May, which is pretty adorable. But yes, yeah, you, you bought the turnips from her previously. Well, it's a crazy world. Anyway, as I was saying, I have someone here who wants to move to Everfree. Oh, yeah, completely. But the poor thing still hasn't found a place to live. It's sort of a tight spot. The kid's name? Why? Oh, it's, it's Danielle. Um, yeah. Yeah, today. So, think you can help out? Oh. Oh, really? Uh-huh. I see. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll pass the word on. 
So we'll catch up later. Right, thanks a lot. See you, Nook, my man. Bye! Okay, I'm back. Miss me? Yeah. Well, good news for you. Sounds like my buddy has some brand new houses for sale. Dirt cheap. The work's all done, but he hasn't been able to rent them. He wants to unload them, so he's willing to take a loss. You have money, right? Uh, you do have money in this game. You start with a small amount of money. And you'll be just fine. Wow, a brand new house. Nothing like it in the world. Maybe I'll move in too. Oh, looks like we're about to pull into Everfree. Man, I love this place. Anyway, maybe we'll run into each other again sometime. Goodbye, and good luck. So yeah, based on what you pick for all those questions, it determines what your face is going to look like. Let's see what face I got. That's not bad. Everfree, now arriving at Everfree. Welcome to Everfree. Watch your step. Eek eek. Uh, I'm not pressing anything yet. I'm not- it's just moving on its own. Okay, now I can move. Uh, I can walk around like this. Uh, the D-pad does nothing. Uh, the left analog lets you move. I believe this is a holdover from the, the um, N64 version, because the N64 controller didn't really make it possible to press both the D-pad and the analog stick in the same game. Whereas uh, on a more modern style of controller, you can reach both of them very easily. On, a, on an N64 controller, it was basically you either hold it to use the D-pad or you hold it to use the analog, which was an interesting way of doing things. Excuse me. Hey, 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 you there. Yes, you. Which one ain't happened to be Danielle? Good, good. I just now had a phone call about you. Hmm? Woo, I'm glad I made it here on time to meet your train. I'm afraid I'm not in the best shape of my life. But I ramble. My name is Tom Nook. I, uh, run the store here in town. I'm quite pleased to meet you, yes? Something strikes me as odd, though, my young friend. Moving to a town before settling on a place to live? Why, it's the craziest thing I've ever heard of! Madness! Absolute madness! Hmm? Whoa! Wow, rude. You'll notice that the uh, laughing emote is a little bit different. It has the word haha -ha instead of having little, like, uh, lines. Don't laugh. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Uh, I am, pardon me, I beg you. That just struck my funny bone. Now, don't you worry. It may be small, but I have a house you can move into right away. It should more than suit your needs, hmm? I can show it to you now, so come along. Let's scuttle. I'm not pressing any buttons. You automatically follow, Tom Nook. You can see there's already four houses built. Here we are. Not too shabby, hmm? I can most hardly recommend any of these houses. Take your pick. Feel free to take a look inside. Really, I don't mind. Not in the least. After all, the doors don't have any locks. Just stand in front of the door and press the A button to go inside. So yeah, you can see... Uh, we've got these four possible... Whoa, screen tearing. That's a thing. Four possible houses to go into. You can't move them, you can't pick where they are. Uh, unlike in pretty much every other game in the series that gave you a bit of control of where the houses are, they always show up here. And you can't actually change the colour of the roof either, so you want to pick the one that has the roof colour you want. Uh, let's grab this one. This house, sadly, is empty. Uh, I was trying to open the door, but accidentally talked to this gyroid here. Take a good look inside, and please, bear in mind that it's a little, how you say, cosy, hmm? Yes, cosy. There we go. So inside here we have a little bit of camera control. You can see it gave us some options. You can move the C-stick to zoom in to this level, out to this level, out to this level, and you can tilt sideways just a little bit. I assume this is also a holdover from the N64 days, because the N64 didn't have a C-stick. It had a second um, set of C it had a set of C buttons, so you moved the controller in discrete increments each time you press the the camera in discrete increments each time you press the button, and they've just translated that across without adding any extra functionality. Basically, uh, we've got a radio in here. I think you can play songs on this if you have any. There's no music in it. We don't have any. Uh, you'll notice this room is incredibly small and also not very pretty. 
Uh, they changed the default wallpaper and stuff in, I think, New Horizons to make it a bit more appealing. But in every previous game, this is how it looks. Uh, there's not much we can do in here. I think we can't move anything yet. Yeah, no, nothing we can do in here then. Uh, we can press Z to turn the lights on and off, which is something. But that's about it. <laughs> well, what do you think? How was it, hmm? I like it. You're quite sure? This is the one you want? Here is good. Very well, it's decided then. That house now belongs to you, Danielle. What a happy day for you, I'm certain. I'll tell you what, I'll even throw in the radio in there at no extra charge. Never could sell that thing at the shop. Now let me see, I suppose you'd like a quick rundown of your house, so listen carefully, please. As you can no doubt see, the house doesn't have any furniture in it at all. Yes, quite bare, I'm afraid. Anything you need, you'll have to get on your own. Obviously, you can't expect me to furnish the place for you. You can do whatever you like with your own stuff, but don't try to mess around with other folks' things. Well, not that you can. Whoa! Nobody will know if you just nudge stuff, though. You probably want to pop into neighbors' houses to get some ideas for your own interior designs. I would. Oh, yes, that weird thing over by the door there? That would be your personal gyroid assistant. If visitors stop by when you're not around, this gyroid will meet and greet them, hmm? It truly really is a must-have. You can teach it messages and the little fellow will repeat them to visitors. And that's just one of its talents. You can also leave items with it, which you can give or even sell to folks. Oh, and one more thing. When you're done playing, be absolutely sure to speak to your gyroid. For that is the only way for you to save everything you did that day. It would be a shame to lose such things. If you quit playing without talking to it first, it'll be like everything you did that day never even happened. I can't imagine a worse fate. Please take extra care so you never forget. I'd hate to see such a thing happen, hmm? And that marks the end of my explanation. I'm hoping that I didn't forget anything. Did you get all that? Do you perhaps wish to hear it again? No thanks. Yes, well, I'm sure you'll settle into the particulars of life in due time. Don't worry. Now then, let's see. With fees and closing costs, the house comes to... 19,800 bells. You can see we have exactly a thousand bells, so we can drop the price down a little bit, but beyond that, not much we can do. You'll also note that the star on the bells isn't filled in, like it is in later games, which is interesting. Yes, that would be not nearly enough. You only have a thousand bells? You're joking with me, yes? Why, you're so short I can't help but laugh. Whoa! You know what happens to people who don't have money, don't you? I'll tell you, they can't buy a house. But you still need a place to stay, don't you? Hmm, a thorny situation. Yes, rather thorny. Then here's what we'll do. You can work part-time at my shop to pay off the rest. Yes, that's acceptable. Splendid, we're all set. This will work wonderfully. Now then, you'll have to come by my shop later to work. You can find my shop in Acre A1. You can't miss it. At least, most people can't miss it. If you have trouble, check the map by the station, yes? I'm heading back there now, so I'll be waiting for you. I'd ask you to be quick about coming, yes? Okay, uh, so Tom looks left. We can have a bit of a talk about how this game works now. So, the gyro won't do anything yet. Welcome home, Danielle. I am currently processing data for Danielle. Good luck with your part-time job. Uh, we can't save the game at all yet. The only way to do it in this game is to talk to the gyroid. In every other game, you can press, I believe, like, start or something to save wherever you want. Uh, this one is the is unique in only letting you save when you talk to the gyroid. There's no autosave either. Uh, that's how every game before New Horizons worked, no autosave. Uh, the notice board here is very similar to the one in later games. Uh, you can just put stuff up on the notice board if you want. Pretty simple. Um, it's always located here in this game, in the middle of the four houses. Uh, whereas in other games it's located in different places, like at the plaza or the town hall or whatever. Um... I can press start to look at my inventory here. You can see I only have 15 slots for items. That cannot be expanded in any way. And items usually don't stack in this game, so it's very limited. Uh, we do however have this section with letters. You can carry 10 letters and you can put items on letters, which was a thing that I did a lot in New Leaf as well. Uh, to, in order to basically have an extra 10 inventory slots, you can put the, your stuff onto your letters to take it out of your main inventory. Pretty cool trick. In New Leaf, some things do stack though, so it's not as big a deal. Uh, we also have a fish uh, category here. This is basically like the Critopedia, the fish and insects sections there. Uh, we also have designs over here. 
Uh, they're roughly the same as they are in New Horizons, but you only have a few slots to work with, which is a bit limited. Um, yeah, uh, the, that's, uh, X button does nothing, Y button also opens the menu there, uh, you hold B to run, but you also press B to pick things up in this game. Uh, that's true of most Animal Crossings. Uh, they ended up, I think, changing it in New Leaf. Uh, there were problems in Wild World because people would start to run by pressing B and they would pick up things off the ground. Like, for example, I'll just demonstrate because I can actually do this in this game too. Uh, people would make, like, a pathway on the ground by putting down a pattern. Uh... No, can I do that? Grab? No, I can't actually do it. Okay, you can, you can put patterns down on the ground in order to make, like, paths and stuff because there wasn't a real path system in previous games. Uh, but people pick up piece, pieces of the path when they tried to run, um, which was then fixed in New Leaf by putting pick up and run on separate buttons. Anyway, um, not much we can do here just yet. We're going to go up north and have a look at the map. Uh, you don't have your own map just yet. We will, but we don't yet. You have to go look at these map signposts to see where things are. Okay, so the shop's there. There's a bunch of houses just there. Uh, we've got a post office, which was removed in New Horizons. Every previous game had one. We've got a dump, which was removed in every other game. You had a recycle bin in some of them, like New Horizons, also Wild World. Uh, some more people's houses. Uh, there's the museum. There's the wish... Uh, that's the police station. Yeah, there's a police station in this game. It's the worst. It's essentially a lost and found area rather than actually a police station, though, so it's not too big a deal, but it's still not great. The Wishing Well is kind of like the plaza in the later games. It's where events will happen. Um, we've got the Tailor, which is just the Able Sisters. You can see all of these things are here from the very beginning. So it feels like this game starts faster than New Horizons, but it really doesn't, and we'll see why shortly. Uh... You also notice there's lots of bugs and stuff around. I cannot make a net, so I can't catch anything yet. I can't ever make a net. There is no crafting in this game. There was a little bit of crafting in um in uh, New Leaf, but much more in New Horizons. Here's Nook's Cranny. Uh, it, it's always here from the beginning of the game. Uh, this part-time work thing is basically a tutorial on how to play the game. Um, and that's why they kept it in later games, even though it's a bit silly. Well, finally you arrived. What took you so long? I was starting to wonder if you'd show. Only kidding. Very good, yes. First off, you'll need to change into these clothes. If you must know, I suppose I'd call it your uniform. Please let me know when you're done changing, yes? Okay, so we have to change clothes. Uh, which lets me demonstrate how changing clothes works in this game. It's very silly. Uh, when you select clothes, all you can do is grab them. Uh, you can't select them and go where, you have to grab them, move them onto yourself in your inventory, and drop them. Like that. And you'll notice the animation is slower and more annoying. Uh, you will also notice that it changed my hat and my clothes at the same time, because you can't customise those separately in this game. That's better. Yes, you look like you were born to wear that uniform. Now you can start working with the remaining 18,800 bells you're in your house. Hurrah! First off, I want you to go plant some trees and flowers around my shop. The area around here is too dull, not charming at all. It's just not an ideal sort of shopping experience, hmm? People like shopping in areas that are clean and well kept, so I want you to spruce things up a bit for me. When you're finished, come and tell me, yes? So this is teaching you how to plant trees and, and flowers, obviously. It doesn't matter where you put them, which is pretty funny. You can just go out here and go plant. And yes, it's much slower than it is in New Horizons because firstly, it closes your inventory when you plant something. Uh, secondly, the cursor always resets to the first position whenever you plant, whenever you do something. So I can't just move across one, I have to go all the way over. And yeah, it doesn't matter where you put things, as long as there's room. You'll notice they automatically become flowers instead of being, like, uh, plantlings that have to grow over a few days. That's true of every game prior to New Horizons that makes flowers actually grow. Um, because in that one you can, like, harvest the flower and leave the, um, the actual flower underneath. There we go. Saplings are the same as, the same as we're familiar with. Uh, you can pick these flowers back up if you want, but we won't. Let's we'll head back in. There we go. Hello, Tom Nook. So, did you make it look a little nicer out there? You gave the ground some charming character, hmm? He is in the eye of the beholder, so I won't bother asking how you chose where to plant everything. 
After all, I'm not the one who get laughed at when travelers from other villages see your work. My no. Now, let's just see here. That little chore was worth, oh, let's call it about 80 bells, yes? Quite generous, I know. Oh, and about your wages, I'll just keep them as payment towards your mortgage, hmm? Now, what should I have you do next? Wait just a moment, something just struck me. Danielle, you just moved to Everfree, but you haven't introduced yourself to all the townsfolk, have you? I'm gonna give you a little break, so why don't you go introduce yourself to everyone in town, hmm? Go on now. And don't forget to introduce yourself to the mayor too, that would show some class. You can probably find him wandering around near the wishing well. I'll see you later, yes? Uh, by the way, we don't have to keep this uniform on. We can change our clothes. Like so. Uh, and you'll see what that does when we get back to talk to Nook again. <laughs> uh, oop, there's someone. Hello. Say, I don't think we've met before, have we? Zzz, which means... It's nice to meet you, I'm Dozer. I live right over there. Zzz. I keep to myself mostly, but please stop by if you're in the neighborhood. Zzz. So yeah, we have to talk to everyone in order to... Boris. Hey, hey, hey. Do I know you? I don't think so, Schnort. What are you doing skulking around like that? Oh, you say your name's Danielle, is it? Hey, calm down. You don't need to be so scared. I'm sorry if I was mean. I'm Boris. Nice to meet you, Schnort. Hello, little mouse. Whoa there. Don't be nervous. I won't bite, sweetie. My name's Candy. It's a cute name, isn't it? Well, what's your name? Danielle. Huh. What a goofy name. Oh no, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's just forget about it and be friends, sweetie. Oh, I like you. I don't know why you call my name Goofy. It's a pretty normal name, but, you know, whatever. So yeah, um, the village is already full of lots of villages in this one. Uh, you'll remember that in New Horizons you start with just two? Uh, and then you have to add more as you progress. Uh, there's the museum. It's a little different to how it is in other games, but we'll look at that in a bit. Yeah, there's definitely, definitely any screen tearing as we run down. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that the game keeps scrolling, like, a screen at a time like this. This acre system was removed in Wild World and hasn't been used in any other game. It's just in this one. I guess it wasn't very popular. Anyway, you check the map here, and you can see, like, the, you can see on the map that it's divided into the same acres, which is how you know, like, how far you have to go to get to certain things. Okay, we have to introduce ourselves to Maple, Monique, and the man who lives at the, who doesn't live at the Wishing Well, but will be there. Uh, you also note that there's some bridges and ramps already. The reason for that is that you can't change them in this game. Uh, they need to be here from the very beginning because there's no other way to do anything uh, about the slopes and inclines and and river, basically. Here's the wishing well. Hello. <laughs> eh? What? Who are you? You, whippersnapper. Tell me something. Who do you respect the most? Uh, I believe you want to pick Grandpa to get Tortimer to like you, but it doesn't really matter. Well now, have my wise and old looks inspired respect? You may be young, but you have a keen eye. Tell me, what's your name? Danielle? Well, that's nice. It's different. Your parents must be proud. Yeah, they are. Thank you. My name is Tortimer. I happen to be the mayor here in Everfree. Yepa, quite the big job. You seem like a decent sort. Whenever there's a holiday or an event going on in town, why don't you come see me? I'm sure I'll have some interesting stuff to pass on. Yepa, I surely will. <laughs> so Tortimer here, he is the mayor in Wild World as well, and I think City Folk? He is not the mayor in New Leaf because he retired. In that game, your character is the mayor. Uh, you arrive in town and there's some like mistaken identity and everyone thinks that you're the mayor, and you become the mayor. Um, and Tortimer, you get to see him in that game as a retiree, you get to visit the island he hangs out on, and he's pretty chill. But yeah, in all the previous games, he was the mayor and he did ma mayoral events. Um, so we'll be seeing him later. I mean, we saw him just now, but we probably won't be doing any mayoral events in this video, so we might not see him later. Uh, was the bridge this way or the other way? I'm not sure. Uh, there's no vaulting poles in any game prior to New Horizons, so you have to find the bridges. Here's the bridge. Uh, we will get a map later, but not yet. There's a lighthouse here, can't do anything with it, but it's kind of cool. Uh, this is where you would make a money rock. M money rock? No, this is where you make a money tree by burying some money. Uh, they changed how that looks a little bit in later games, but it works the same way. 
Although I think you might need a golden shovel for it to work in this game, not sure. Uh, that's what a fossil berry looks like. It could also be a gyroid though. This game has berry gyroids. They all do except for New Horizons, which hasn't added them yet. I'm expecting it to though. Gyroids are a pretty recognisable part of the series. Yeah, we're getting some screen tearing as I walk, like, vertically. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Also horizontally, actually. I'm getting a lot of screen tearing. Hopefully that looks okay for you. I don't- I don't know. <laughs> um, you'll also note, uh, these inclines are much bigger. Like, they're affecting all of the area around here instead of just being a little ramp. Uh, you know, because you can't move them, they may as well take up as much space as they want. Uh, I guess. I, I guess that's the logic. I also know there's trees all over the place. I can shake them, but I have no way to avoid being stung by bees because I don't have a net, so I probably won't. Actually, I believe in Games Pride and New Leaf, you couldn't shake trees while holding a net, so you couldn't uh, safely get bees at all, really. Um, I've forgotten where the next house is. It, you get the ability to look at a map anywhere after you've done, I think, this job. Uh, which is pretty annoying because this is the one you probably want the map most for. Ah, here's someone. Hello. Maple. Hello, I'm Maple. If you don't mind, do you think you'd like to be friends? Oh, that's super. I'm a little shy, but I'm glad I woke up the courage to ask you, honey. Oh, we'll have so much fun together, Danielle. Have a good afternoon and come talk to me again. Oh, sweetie. What a lovely. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna go this way. I believe we talked to everyone, uh, that we need to anyway. There are more people. We haven't talked to Blathers and we haven't been to the post office, so we haven't talked to either of those people. But we've talked to everyone else, I think. Oh, Monique, right, sorry. I forgot about you, Monique. Oh, also, this is where you do the town tune. There's a melody board outside. In every previous game, in every later game, you would go into a building like the post office to do your town tune. Uh, or the town hall, or, you know, the, the, um, I think that's it. You would go into one of those and talk to someone. In this one, there's actually just a board outside you can talk to if you want to change your town tune. Uh, the actual mechanics are exactly the same. I'll just show you. You can see it's the same amount of notes and everything, and you can just do the same thing. I'm not sure if the question mark was kept. I think it was. Oh, that's a random note. Um, you'll note that there's an e-reader option there. Basically... If you're not familiar, e-reader was a concept that worked kind of like Amiibo. Um, but using cards with a magnetic stripe on them that you scanned using your Game Boy Advance. It was pretty silly. Uh, there's the dump. Items sometimes show up there. It's kind of like the recycle bin. You can grab the stuff that shows up there. I think if you leave garbage there, it will be disposed of. Um, hello, Monique. Well, it's not every day I see a new face around here. Pfft. Oh, you're Danielle, are you? Pfft. I'm Monique. No, the pleasure's all mine, really. Pfft. Thanks, Monique. Okay, so we've met everyone now. So let's just head over to Nook. I believe he'll give us a map now because we've already done the thing that most requires the use of a map. <laughs> uh, oops, now we've got to cross the river. The river. Yeah, it's much harder to navigate in this game because of the acre system. You can't see very far. Uh, there's also no camera control. Uh, that's true of most games though. New Leaf added a little bit, but for the most part you couldn't control the camera in any Animal Crossing. <laughs> Ag! Why did you change out of your uniform, hmm? Just who gave you permission to do that, I'm wondering. I swear, what is it with kids these days, hmm? Always needing a casual workplace. When I was- why, when I was young, we... I suppose I must change with the times, yes? Go with your hip-hipness, wear whatever you like. But, you can't wear anything that might make my customers feel uncomfortable, yes? On that p this point, I won't budge. That's just the way society works, you understand? Sometimes you have to obey the rules, yes? Nah, I don't have to obey the rules. <laughs> uh, I'm doing up my jacket, it's a bit cold in here, you know? There we go. I don't know if you could hear the zip, but it zipped up. <laughs> huh? You say you've met everybody in town, hmm? Well, aren't you the social butterfly? Whoa-ho-ho! Perhaps, though, you were not quite thorough. Somehow I think you may have missed somebody, hmm? Be sure to greet everyone in town, including the mayor. Go on, don't be shy. Did I miss someone? 
Huh. I thought I got everyone. Let me check the map. Uh, I've got to cross the river, so we're gonna go down here. So yeah, this tutorial is not optional. You have to do all this stuff before you're allowed to save. <laughs> it's pretty annoying. Uh, let's see. Uh, I created Maple, I created Monique, I created Candy, Boris, and Dozer. That's everyone that you're supposed to greet. Who did I miss? Oh, Tybalt. There we go. Okay. Let's go greet Tybalt from, um, from, uh, Romeo and Juliet, presumably. I'm guessing he's a cat. Because Tybalt was called the Prince of Cats or whatever for no reason. It doesn't make a lot of sense in the context of the play. <laughs> um, I can't remember how to get down there. I think I want to cross the river here. But yeah, in this game you have no control over where the ramps and bridges are at all. I think you got a little bit of control in uh, City Folk, and then in New Leaf you could just place them uh, with a very similar system to what happens in New Horizons. Because you were the mayor, you had the permission to do all those ordinances and stuff. Is that a ball? Huh? Yeah, there's a ball, okay. <laughs> There's the Able Sisters, by the way. You can go there if you want to do Able Sisters things. Oh yeah, by the way, you can't make a design unless you go to the Able Sisters and pay them in this game. You can't edit designs anywhere you want. Hey, how's it going? My name's Tybalt. I live just around the corner. Grrrr. So yeah, he's a cat. So, what's your name? Danielle? That's your name? What a ridiculous name! Still, it'll be real hard to forget. Grrrr. Well, you're rude. Anyway, that's everyone. Okay, uh, let's go back to Nook and tell him we've talked to everyone. Hey, cab. Mm. I haven't got an axe yet, but if I had one, I'd hit the cops with it. That'd be pretty cool. If the game lets you, I'm not sure if it does, actually. Mm. Oh, did I meet you? Yeah, I met you. That's Boris. I met all of you. Yeah, cool. Doom -ba -doom. Nook's cranny is this place. So, did you meet everybody in town? Quite a motley crew, yes, but variety is the spice of life, you know. If you don't get along well with the folks you're never free, you'll never fit in, you understand? But never fear, I have a good feeling about you, hmm? Now then, what shall I have you do next? Ah yes, I need you to deliver some furniture, hmm? At last, it's like you're actually working in the shop. Take this furniture to Monique and make a B5, yes? And don't stop to sniff the roses on the way, go straight there and then come straight back, hmm? Okay, still no map. Uh, that's annoying. I mean, we know which acre she's in, so it's not too tricky, but it's still annoying. Um, what is it? Can we tell? No, it's just delivery. Okay. Anyway, yeah, we go to Monique, who is... Uh, I keep it running into the trees because I don't know where the gaps are as well with this style. Oh my goodness. Hello, Monique. Oh, Danielle, you're priceless, you know that? You're like a peppy little bag of fun. <laughs> Enough idle chit-chat. Did you need something from me? <laughs> Delivery! <laughs> Why, that's mine! Why do you have it, Danielle? Are you working for Tom Nook or something? Oh, you are. How amusing. You mean to tell me you didn't have enough money to buy a house when you moved? <laughs> Well, how silly. Pfft. Were you the mental run to the litter or what? Wow, I hate you now. That's a horrible thing to say. Oh, I'm just having a little fun with you. I suppose everyone has to take a bold step once in their lives. So, you must not have any money to buy furniture. Don't be ashamed. Here, take this modern lamp. Pfft. I think it's randomized what piece of furniture you get from doing this. You simply must take it. I bet you go home to a sad little empty house every day, don't you? Pfft. I mean, I do, but it may not be much, but beggars can't be choosers. You've got to start somewhere. Interior decorating is vital. Besides, this has to improve your place a little bit. Put it in your house, face it, and hold the A button. Then you can push it, pull it around, and even rotate it until you find a spot where it looks good. Easy as pie. If you have any culture whatsoever, you'll realize that decorating your house can be rather fun. So take this bottom lamp home and try the thing out. You shan't be sorry. And by the by, you can face the dress up radio or whatever and press the A button to interact with it. But remember now, don't skip work to play around in your room. You've got a job to do. So yeah, that's a tutorial. Um, cool. <laughs> um, but now I've made the delivery, so we can go back to Tom Nook. I 
think you can't actually put stuff in your house until you've done your part-time work, so yeah, we're gonna have to head back and finish that off first. The mandatory tutorial in this game is kind of long. Um, also, we can see we have peaches here. Uh, that is still, like, random what fruit you get, and you do want to get other people's fruits. It is harder to do in this game, though, for reasons I'll explain shortly. Welcome back, worker bee. Looks like you delivered the furniture. Nice work. You did a good job, so I figure that earns you, oh, say, 230 bells. Not bad wages, hmm? Now onto your next task. Hmm? What's that? You say it's too difficult to try to find things without a map? Honestly, kids these days and they're constant complaints. Why, when I was a little rac- just a little raccoon, I- You're not a raccoon, you're a tanuki. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay, okay, here's a map. Press the X button to look at it. Should serve your needs just fine, hmm? Your next job is to write some copy for a direct mailing. You know, sort of a personal advertisement. Why don't you send it to Candy, who lives in Acre somewhere in Row B? It's just good business. Candy's a very loyal customer, so this is notice of a special sale. As for what you write, well, I'll just leave it up to you, Danielle, but try to make it exciting. Oh, and you might want to think about introducing yourself as Danielle, who works for me, yes? You can use this stationery to write the letter. Go to the post office to mail the letter, yes? You'll find the post office in Acre A4. Now hurry back, hmm? Okay, so... Yeah, writing letters was a major part of the game previously. It's a little less important now. You can see we can press X to see our map now. Very helpful. Uh, it's not as great as, say, uh, New Leaf, which has the map on the bottom screen at all times, which is super duper helpful. Uh, or New Horizons, which has a mini map. I think uh, City Folk also had a mini map. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we can write a letter by choosing this paper from our inventory. This is how it works in every game prior to New Horizons. In that one, you just go to the airport to send a letter. Uh, but yeah, you can see I can send it to anyone in town that I know, sort of. I can't send it to some people, but all the villagers. And you can write whatever you want. It doesn't care what you put here, provided you write something. So, um, there we go. That'll do. There we go. That'll do. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you can see there's an ink thing there. That's like a character limit, basically, disguised as ink. Um, wait a second. There we go, that's better. So yeah, you write whatever you want, then it goes over here into your letters section, and you can then go and send that, which is what we're about to do. So the post office, uh, we saw it already, it's over this way. And you can't decide where, where any of these buildings are either, of course, they are randomised. Um, and it's not up to you. Post office. Good day, how can I help you? So this is Pelly, uh, who runs the post office. She's been in every game except New Horizons. Uh, because there's no post office in that game. But in every previous game you'd see her, and her sister Phyllis, who shows up at night time and is kind of a jerk. Maybe that's why they cut them, because Phyllis is mean? I don't know. Ah yes, I see. Would you like to mail more letters? Never mind. Oh really? Come back any time. Uh, there's also this machine here. It looks like the, um... Like the, um, redeeming Nook Miles and stuff machine, but what it's actually for is using e-reader cards. So basically, you could get Animal Crossing cards, uh, that you could scan, and they would give you special villages. So it's exactly like the special amiibo that you can use now, except using older technology. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, anyway, uh, we now have a modern lamp, and we've through that letter. The modern lamp was there for a while, I just forgot what we were doing. <laughs> okay, so that's that done. Um, oh, by the way, the save a letter option, that's so you can take letters out of your inventory and store them. Uh, because in these games, your letters go here instead of just living in your mailbox. They basically cut out the middleman in, oops, in New Horizons and made you uh, take letters to um, just store letters in your mailbox forever and just have a big mailbox. Which is simpler. Did you send the letter? Hmm? Good job. It took you longer than I'd have liked, so I'll have to dock you a bit. How does 130 bells sound? 
But I'm glad you got it done. After all, if you can't even write a letter, you're gonna have problems in this town. Oh, yes, well... I, uh, haven't actually prepared the next package I need you to deliver. I'm a bit behind. It would be a waste for you to just hang around here and wait for me, so why don't you go help out the villagers? You may find you can do a little better work for them than you can for me, but not much better, yes? Just be sure to come back here after a bit, hmm? Okay, so now we have to do a chore for one of the villagers. I believe whoever we talk to will, will be the person who has a chore for us. Let's see. Good afternoon. Still good, sweetie? Anyway, what's up, sweetie? I need work. Ooh, let's see. Hmm. Yup, I think I will ask for your help, sweetie. See this Game Boy? Could I get you to, like, take it to Monique for me, sweetie? Silly old Monique forgot it at my house. This is really valuable, so I want to return it in a jiffy. It's an easy little job. You will do it for me, won't you, sweetie? Because that would be super. Give it to me. Okay then, great, cool. Go get him, sweetie. Uh, why are you all angry? What happened? Hey, don't talk to me. Just seeing you makes me angry. Why would I want to talk to you? Wow. <laughs> Looks like it's all coming around, down around my ears. Sorry, but I don't feel like talking right now. Sorry. <laughs> I guess they had an argument and they were now angry with each other, but they wanted to take it out on me because people in this game are kind of mean. Anyway, we're gonna take it to Monique, right? Yeah, you can see it's a Game Boy Color, which is interesting. Bit of product placement. <laughs> of course, the Game Boy Advance was out by now, but it wasn't in the N64 version, I think. It might have been, I'm not sure. Oh, Danielle, you're priceless, you know that? You're like a peppy little bag of fun. You said that already. Let's get right to the point. What can I do for you? Delivery. Ah, uh, my Game Boy. This is rather odd. How did it come to be in your possession? Oh, really? Is that so? I left it at Candy's home, did I? Hmm. Well, you've saved me the trouble of having to pick it up myself. How very excellent. I am in your debt. Please take this furniture. Thank you. Danielle, you do excellent work. I'll keep you in mind the next time I have some menial, me, menial task. Thank you. Um, you'll notice, by the way, that we can't put this furniture down and look at it. Uh, we've got a modern lamp and a white golf bag. The only game that lets you put furniture down outside is New Horizons. That's a brand new feature. Uh, I mean, you can all you can always drop it as a leaf. Uh, I'll just demonstrate like that. Just have a leaf on the ground, which you can then pick up. Um, but yeah, you can't put them down and have them uh, show up as what they are, except in your house. It's kind of limited. Oh, hey, that's in this game. The skidding thing. Huh, I didn't realise that was already in this game. Of course, you know, it's in every later game, so it fits. Um, actually, maybe not maybe not in Wild World? I'm not sure. I haven't played that one in a long time, as much as I loved it. It was a lot, it was really good. Were you able to help anybody out? Many animals need things, hmm? Did you get anything good in return? Critters in town are all fairly generous, so your work never goes unrewarded. That's quite nice, yes? Next thing you need to deliver a nice carpet for me, yes? And don't dilly-dally along the way, hmm? Take this carpet to Tybalt, yes? Just because I'm not watching you doesn't mean you can stop and chit-chat with folks you meet along the way. Then again, there's no way I can keep tabs on you. Just try not to gab too much. Tell me when you're done. So, um... You'll notice this icon rep looks like a rug from New Horizons. This is the icon that carpets had in every previous game, which work like flooring does in New Horizons. Um, just got a new feature there. Uh, I want to talk to you again and let you know I did the delivery. Hello again, Danielle. Anyway, what's up, sweetie? Oh, I can't. Okay. So, like, you'll probably tell from just walking around Everfree that you have tons of fruit trees here. You know you can pick the fruit, right? Sure, just face the tree and press the A button to shake it, sweetie. Mm-mm, fruit. You can eat it or give it to me, or we can just sell it at Tom Nook's shop. Or you know what else? You can, like, bury a piece of fruit in the ground and it'll grow up into a fruit tree. Isn't that so awesome? You can have full-on fruit whenever. It's like owning an orchard, sweetie. Lifting down this way. Tibble, 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 Tibble,
You again. Hey there, Gra. Tell me, Danielle. What's new, Gra? Delivery. Yes, oh yeah, pate. Oh, you have no idea how badly I've been wanting this, Gra. Woohoo. Once I get this carpet down, I'm gonna have the smoothest pad ever. Gra. I'll be Dr. Popular, MD. See, let me fill you in. If you want a cool place, you have to coordinate your rug and wallpaper. Gra. Danielle, don't flip out on me for saying this, but you should try changing your rug too. Grrr. I don't need my old carpet anymore, so you can have it if you want it. Go on now, ain't no skin off my back. I stumbled onto this rug at the Nookerator's place. Old Tom is an animal when it comes to cool gear. It was an impulse, impulse buy. Yeah, I know they're gambles. When I got, got it home, it just didn't match my room. Oops, live and learn, I guess. I'm on the edge of tomorrow. <laughs> I don't regret it. If someone had bought it before me, I'd never have known. It's cool that Tom changes his product line every day, but stuff sells out way too quickly there. Man, I mean, I'm a busy dude. I can't just be running to the store every day to check on each sale, grrr. Hey, are you sure it's okay for you to just hang out and rap with me like this? You're working, grrr. So yeah, that's a bit of a tutorial about how the shop works. It is true that the items in the shop change every day and sell out because um, in this game, it's I think everything sells out when you buy it once, rather than having some things that can sell out and other things that can't, like in New Horizons. <laughs> Welcome back to your employee. Very good, yes. Looks like you're finally getting the hang of things around here. The way you work, I'd be happy to have you working here full time. Wouldn't that be a treat? In any case, I can see you're putting a lot of effort into your work, so this time I'll give you 580 bells. I just need to deliver an axe to candy. Be extra careful with it, hmm? I see that light in your eyes. Now, the stuff you deliver is wrapped, so you couldn't use it even if you wanted to. So don't get any ideas, hmm? If you want to cut down any trees, you'll have to get your own axe, yes? Very good, then. Give it your best shot, and tell me when you're done, yes? Okay, so yeah, we have an axe now. We can't use it. Um, you can see, we can grab it, we can try to put it on ourselves, I think. Nope, not allowed. Let's have to take it to candy. Um, in this game, the axe is the only tool that can break, by the way. Uh, so you had to buy multiple axes, whereas all of the other items are unbreakable, you just need to buy them once. Hello again, Danielle. So, what's going on, sweetie? Delivery! Oh wow, thank you! You're the coolest! Hey, wait, I'm such a space cadet. I was gonna ask, are you the one who sent me this letter, sweetie? <laughs> Everyone in this town just loves getting letters. We save every single one, sweetie, yeah! And you know what else? The only thing better than getting letters is showing them off, sweetie. And like, even though we all live in Everfree now, who knows when somebody might move, sweetie? I mean, you know, when I move, I'm totally gonna bring every letter I've ever gotten with me. Call me wacky. And you know something? I'll probably show them to my new friends in my new town, sweetie. Yup. It could happen. So if I were you, I wouldn't write anything too embarrassing, sweetie. Okay? Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um, if you, if you played, like, in someone else's town, there's a chance that your villagers will move to that town, and they will bring their letters and show them to other people. It kind of reminds me of, um, you know, the tombstone thing in, um, the Oregon Trail? You know, pepperoni and cheese and all that? It reminds me of that, which I think is kind of cute. I'm not sure if that's still a feature in later games, because I haven't written a whole lot of letters in later games, but I, I, I would hope it would be, just because in later games there's online play. Welcome back, nice work. Yes, very good, yes. Now let's see, that chore earned you a solid 230 bells. Hmm, what to do, hmm? The next job will be... Ah yes, now I remember. You've seen the bulletin board in front of your house, haven't you? Well, I want you to write an ad for my shop on that bulletin board. You get foot traffic around there, yes? You can write whatever catchy slogan you like. Just make sure it sounds exciting, hmm? And don't write anything that might embarrass me. Once you write something on it, you can never erase it. Well, off you go, hmm? And let me know when you're all done, yes? I think you can erase the notice board in New Horizons, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. And you mostly don't use it. Um, it's just used to notify you of things like fishing tourneys. So yeah, we want to write an entry. And you can write whatever you want. It doesn't check that you wrote the right thing. There we 
we go. <laughs> Looking good. And yeah, in this game you can't delete them. Uh, there's a bit of advice to how the system works. You can look at that. Let's keep it tasteful, folks. <laughs> Oops. Uh, can I cancel? Okay. There we go. Well done. Welcome back. You put a buzz generating ad up there, something animals will talk about over the water cooler. Very good, yes, I suppose. Hmm, that means... Yes, you're all done. All the work I hadn't gotten around to is now all done. How wonderful for me, hmm? Since I don't have any more work for you to do, I'm afraid I have no choice but to let you go. Hmm, the rest of your mortgage? Oh, of course, you still have to pay all of it off. That's how life works. Let me just have a look at my records here, hmm? Yeah, so far you've worked off a total of 1,400 bells. So you have 17,400 bells left to pay. Not exactly a sum to sneeze at, hmm? Since there's no more work for you here, you'll have to figure out how to pay it off on your own. Now how could a youngster go out making some bells? I suppose running errands for the villagers, and selling things you no longer need too, hmm? That should generate some cash flow, I should think. If you've got stuff to sell, just come talk to me, yes? I'll give you a very fair price for anything you've got. Oh, and when you want to make a mortgage payment, do it at the post office for me. Tax purposes, you know, hmm? If you can pay off about a thousand bells a week, that'll work for me. Otherwise, I'll send for the raccoon goons. This is a joke, there's no, there's no like, prepayment scheme or anything, you can pay off whenever you want, just like in the other games. Whoa, just a joke. Once you pay it all off, we can talk about remodeling the place for you. That house you've got now is pretty small after all, and I'm sure you'd like a little more room, hmm? Well, thanks for your help. I hope you'll come see me for all of your future shopping needs, hmm? Yes! I'm finally done working! I'm free! I'm free! You'll recognize that animation in later, ga in later games too, it happens a lot. Anyway, now we can do whatever we want, so... The first thing I want to do is actually get some fruit. Um... I can't really see where, where it landed, because of the camera angle. And yeah, you can't change the camera angle. Well, I got two fruit, so I guess that's something. Uh, let's find another fruit tree and get some more. I just want to amass a little bit of money, um, so that I can get the shovel from the shop. You may have noticed it's there. You don't craft a shovel in this game, you have to buy one from the shop. Um, actually, people complained a bit about New Horizons starting slowly, but it's interesting, because a lot of the stuff you need to do in these games is based on your tools, and New Horizons lets you craft a lot of the tools on your first or second day. Whereas every other game in the series, uh, you get one tool from the starting shop per day, and you need to play for several days for them all to show up. You'll see these aren't stacking. Uh, fruit does stack in some games, it doesn't in this one. Uh, I think New Leaf is the only one where fruit can stack. Uh, and only after they did the update, the Welcome Amiibo update in, I think, 2016? I'm not sure. The original New Leaf didn't do that. Welcome. Do come in, have a look around, hmm? Feel free to browse, but try not to carouse. Ho ho! Yes, yes, what can I do for you, hmm? Okay, we've got a catalogue. Uh, that's just like when you go to Nook Shopping in the later, later game and you can buy things that you've already had before. Same deal. Other things, uh, this lets you put, ask for the turnip prices, it lets you put in a code, which is like a promotional sort of thing, you have like a password that gives you a certain item. Uh, but anyway, we want to sell. Um, I think you can multi-select, yeah, you press the X button to multi-select, if you just press A it'll just sell one thing. It's kind of weird. If add it all up, my price comes to 600 bells, you will sell, yes? I'll sell. Thanks much. Tell me, is there anything else you wish to sell? No. I see. Well, come talk to me if there's anything I can help you with. Yes. Uh, so we're gonna go over here and buy the shovel. That's a shovel. The price is 500 bells. It's a steal at that price. Would you like it? I'll buy it. Thanks much. Very good. Yes, that'll be 500 bells. Thanks much. Use the shovel, grab it on your item screen and put it into your hands. And just press the A button if you feel like digging a hole. Simple, yes? If the ground is soft enough, you'll be able to dig. Don't go digging in folks' gardens now. 
can usually tell where something is buried because the ground will look a bit unusual. Try it out, why don't you? Try it out, why don't you? Go take a careful look around and see what you might be able to dig up, hmm? Okay, we now have a shovel. Thank you, do come again. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, so we're gonna equip our shovel. To do that, there's no shortcut to doing this. You have to open your inventory. Go to the shovel, grab it, move it to yourself. Very slow. Uh, New Leaf added the ability to, to go through tools with the D-pad. The D-pad in this game does nothing. <laughs> anyway, we have a shovel now. We don't have to worry about it breaking because that's how this game works. Everything lasts forever. Um, but we are going to hit some things. So let's just... Uh... You can see the animation's a bit clunky. And the hole looks a bit silly as well. Uh, hitting a rock normally gives you nothing, as you can see. You also can't uh, fill in a hole without using the shovel like you can in later games. I was trying to press B to kick the dirt back in, but you can't in this game. There is still a money rock, which is why I'm hitting all these rocks. And yeah, because of muscle memory, I'm mashing the, the pick stuff up button to try to fill in these holes, which does not work in this game. It works in, I think, New Leaf as well. Uh, but not in the other games, because that was a new feature for New Leaf. The sound effects are roughly the same. Uh, you can't jump over holes in this game either, see? Muscle memory, muscle memory is not good for this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, here's a gyroid. A mini lullaboid. So a gyroid, which is not available at New Horizons yet, but probably will be, uh, is a piece of furniture you can place in your house. Um, and basically they look like the little gyroid hanging out, hanging out outside of your house, uh, but they, but you use them as furniture, you can place them where you want and stuff, and they make music. Like, they do a little sound, and when you make a bunch of them, it, they make a sound together. Um, which is kind of a weird thing. Uh, also if you've read The Terrible Secret of Animal Crossing, you might know that gyroids have no, have been known to do something else as well, but that's not canon. <laughs> Check it out, I dug up a fossil. I think this is the only game where fossils can be on the beach. Uh, in later games, they're forced to be off, like on normal ground, and things that are buried on the beach tend to be other stuff. Huh? You again? Hey there, Gura. Hey, so what can I do for you, Daniel? Yeah, if you bury fruit, it'll sprout and go into a tree. Grrr, no lying. The thing is, before you even think about burying fruit, you have to get yourself a shovel. Grrr. Oh yeah, there's tons of cool things buried around here, but you'll have a hard time hunting them with no shovel. Nookmeister sells shovels in his shop, but you better hurry up and buy one before he sells out. Grrr. Well, I've got one. It's, it's this. Here, I have it. It won't let me fill in the hole because he's standing too close to it, I think. There we go. So yeah, you don't get uh, materials from hitting rocks, but there is still a money rock. I think I already mentioned that. That's why I'm hitting all these rocks. There is no way to know which one's the money rock without hitting them, so... But it doesn't matter too much because you don't damage them at all in this game when you hit stuff with them. It's just a bit slow. Anyway, what I'm really looking for is stuff like fossils. Uh... <laughs> Okay, that's probably enough. Uh, see, fossils are very different in this game to every other Animal Crossing game, and I'm going to demonstrate how that is in a moment. Uh, two fossils is probably enough, actually. Um, ba -ba -da. Let's go to the museum. Go to the museum. <laughs> there we go. 
Here's how it looks in this game. It's kind of nice. Hey, Blathers. <laughs> Who? Hmm. Zark? What time is it? I'm so very sleepy. Oh dear me, a thousand pardons. So terribly sorry. I'm afraid I'm a bit of a night, um, owl. Yes. Yes, well, by the by, might there be something with which I can assist you? Oh yes, indeed. Well, tell me, might you be familiar with the Faraway Museum? Uh, I know that. Hmm, yes. True, true. The place you send fossils. Uh, okay. I probably shouldn't have chosen I know that, but basically... Basically, uh, blathers in this game can't uh, identify fossils for you. You have to uh, get a, you have to get a letter from the Faraway Museum so that you know where it is, and then you have to put fossils into letters to send to the Faraway Museum, and you get them back identified the next day. Uh, I'm a bit more weed. Uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, I, I picked the wrong option, clearly. Um. Uh, yes, please stop. Let's try this again. <laughs> we never try our patrons. Yes, well, by the way, I might be someone to try to assist you. Donate an item. Who? Who, I say? Splendid. What no doubt priceless item might you have for us today? You'll notice you're allowed to give him things that aren't in the categories in this game, which is interesting. It's kind of pointless, but it's cool. Ooh, indeed, woohoo, an unexamined fossil. My heart is set a twitter at the very thought. I am a fervent student of paleontology, and I am fairly confident I can assess the identity of this specimen. However, I must confess, I have yet to receive my certification, so I cannot offer an official examination. If I were mistaken, you see, I fear I would be, shall we say, severely chastised. Yes, quite severely indeed. I'm terribly sorry about this, but you'll need to send this to the main Faraway Museum for a proper examination. Incidentally, just by the by, I believe you received a letter from the Fire Museum, correct? Not yet. Well, who? No letter yet, eh? Don't fret about it over much. I believe it should arrive sometime tomorrow. Once you receive it, you'll be able to correspond with the Faraway Museum, and won't that be nice, eh, what? Brilliant minds they have over there, simply brilliant. They send them any fossils you happen to excavate. They will return your fossils as soon as they have finished identifying them. Rather tidy with your system, don't you say? Oh, who? One more thing. While you're waiting for an initial correspondence from the Faraway Museum, you must not rebury fossils in the earth. This is very important, you see. Vital. Terribly crucial. Don't ask me why. To be perfectly honest, I'm not quite sure of the reasoning myself. What, what? It seems that reburying fossils creates some confusion about whether or not you're ready to receive that letter. Sounds a bit daft, doesn't it? In any case, you don't have to carry the fossils with you, just don't bury them again. You may keep them in your flat. You could even scatter them about the landscape, I suppose, if you so desire. So, that, as they say, is that. I do hope it's clear, eh, what? I trust you'll follow my instructions to the letter. Now, is there anything else you can show me? No? Nope. Oh, good. Actually, we have nothing on display. Yeah, it's completely empty, yeah. Rather large, expensive, and thoroughly empty box. However, we are open around the clock and gladly accept donations from residents of Everfree at all times. We do appreciate your support. So, yeah, you can't give him the fossils uh, on day one because you don't have a letter from the Faraway Museum and you can't send things to the Faraway Museum, and when you do, it takes a day to get them back anyway. So yeah, the fossil system in this particular Animal Crossing is very annoying, uh, which is probably why they changed it so Blathers can assess fossils for you in every subsequent game. Uh, let's drop by our house and see if we have a letter yet. Looks like we don't. Yeah, it's empty. Okay, let's try this rug out. Uh, spread on floor. There we go. Looks, that looks better. Uh, there is no sort of form of storage in this game, by the way. Uh, there is a kind of storage in every other game, but it's it's not very good in most games. Um, and basically, in Wild World, you had one cabinet, which you could put some items in, and regardless of what cabinet you opened, it was the same cabinet. Uh, the same was true in New Leaf, but they also added storage inside your house, which was much bigger. Uh, and then in New Horizons, you just have the storage inside your house. Uh, let's put out this lullaboyd. There we go. So you can see it looks neat and it makes a bit of a noise. Um, drop. So the only way to rearrange your furniture in this game is to grab it and push it around, like this. Uh, and that was the only way to do things until New Leaf, which added... Uh, I think kind of like designer mode that we saw in New Horizons. 
uh, as part of that update that they gave it. Uh, basically, they ported the way Happy Home Designer worked, which is an amazing game, uh, back to New Leaf and put it in that game as well. Uh, yeah, so that's my house. <laughs> Um, what else do I need to discuss? Uh, the way multiplayer works is weird. This game has no online play and basically no multiplayer that actually involves both people playing. What you can do is put another memory card into your GameCube and visit the town that's on that memory card. Um, so basically you can visit other people's towns but they won't be there. Um, which is kind of silly. Um, but you know, it was a way to visit other people's towns. You do that from the train station here by talking to Porter. Um, I won't because I only have the one memory card to work with anyway. I mean, I, I, it's an emulator, I could make another memory card, but I'd have to make another town and I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, I think I've demonstrated most of the stuff I wanted to talk about. Uh, let's talk to our gyroid and just demonstrate what happens when you quit. Oops. Welcome home, Danielle. How may I be of assistance? Save. Would you like to save? That's right. Request processed. Please enter the house. So you have to talk to your gyroid. You can't do it anywhere else in the game. You all done? What do you want me to do? Save and quit. Okay, let me save your town data for you then. Hang tight for a minute. I'm saving your town data to the memory card in slot A. Don't turn the power off. Remove the memory card. This tends to take a while. Uh, saves have gotten faster and faster. Wild World was slow too, New Leaf was much quicker. Score, we're all done here. Hey, catch you later. So, uh, then we get back to the title screen. Yep. Just want to demonstrate what happens. You get the title screen again. Which isn't showing my town, interestingly. That's still just the generic town. When you press start, here's what happens. You'll see a random villager standing in this little spotlight. Hey, uh, are you ready to hit the town, sweetie? It's May 30th, 2020 at 1.14pm in slot A Everfree right now. You all set to go? And yeah, you can make some changes to stuff. What, is something you don't need to do first, sweetie? Yeah, you can change the rumble, uh, you can change sound things, I think other things. Here's the other stuff I can do for you. So what'll it be, sweetie? Demolish a house is how you get rid of one, one player's character. Build a new town, delete your whole save. Set clock lets you adjust the real-time clock so it's offset from the GameCube's clock. And that's about it. Um, cool. So basically, um, this is what mo like most of the Animal Crossings did, I think. This game does it with Spotlight with a random villager. Uh, New Leaf does the same thing with a Spotlight, but it's always Isabel because everyone loves Isabel. I think City Folk did it with a random villager as well. Whereas Wild World, you all shared a house, and it showed the bedroom with all four people sleeping, and you picked someone to play as them, which was kind of a weird choice. Um, it wasn't bad, but it was weird. Anyway, um, I guess that's about it for this video. Uh, I've shown you how this game goes, a bit of the basics. Um, you can see it, we've come a long way since the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. It's still kind of a classic, but eh. It's no new leaf and it's no new horizons. It's 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 an old game. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye. <laughs>